context, I recently binge read A Song of Ice and Fire, the books the Game of Thrones is based off of, and yeah, I read the RPG rules. Pretty fun adaptation of the books with cool roleplay rules, even if combat is a bit scuffed at points. I'm trying to get a game off the ground, so I post it to LFG in a few Discord servers I'm in. I soon receive a message. I want to join your game. Can I be a ranger? Yeah, sure, I'm sure there's a way to translate the ranger class in the game. Uh, cool, can I be an elf? There's no elves in this game. What? Why would you make a world without elves? That's stupid. I, I didn't make the world. A Song of Ice and Fire doesn't have elves. Well, if a fantasy game doesn't have elves, then it's a bad fantasy world. Screw this. He then proceeded to go offline. I'm not even mad, I'm just confused. If you're so set in stone about playing an elf, why even ask to be in a Song of Ice and Fire campaign? I've said this before, and I'm going to continue saying it. People need to learn how to Google things. Seriously, simple stuff like this. Just look up. Are there elves in the Song of Ice and Fire? Easy as that. Seriously, though, I mean, I guess this guy must really like World of Warcraft and Azeroth. That place has, like, two dozen elf variants for him to pick from. This story happened while playing Sunless Citadel, 5th edition, but there will be no spoilers ahead. We were four players, a wizard, a barbarian, a rogue, and a cleric, all level 2. DM is a great friend of ours, but it's the type of DM that sometimes tells you that you get hit by a trap after you have searched the room for traps with a 20 perception roll. Because you didn't specifically check the ceiling of the room and only the floor. Or when you have something in mind, he will make it happen regardless of any action the group made to prevent it. He is also pretty bad at reading modules and monster abilities, but that is another story. We were exploring the dungeon, and after some fights, we were doing a short rest in one room, after making sure there were no other enemies around. Now, according to the DM, you are all resting when you hear a skittering noise from the corridor, and an enormous insect similar to a cockroach approaches you. You immediately recognize it as a rust monster. Two identical monsters come out from a huge gash in the wall and approach you. Roll for initiative. You are surprised. Wait, we obviously closed the door to the room before starting the short rest. We told you we made our position safe, and you didn't tell us there was a huge gash on one side of the room, or we would have, you know, inspected it. You didn't specify you closed the door, and the gash was just a big open gash. At this point, the cleric chimes in. Wait, I have the observant feet. I have like 20 passive perception. Shouldn't have I at least heard the insects come away before getting surprised? Did you roll their stealth that high? No, but you were sleeping. You had no passive perception. Wait, sleeping? Come on, we were doing a short rest. The DM did not listen to the complaints and the combat starts, but we just wanted to escape. We didn't want to risk our few weapons and armor. Wizard, I exit the room and search for the door at the end of the hallway. I try to open it. Does it open? You try to push the door and it remains closed. What do you do? Do I still have my action after trying the door? Yes, you do. Alright, I'll keep my ready action to help the barbarian open the door when he comes here. After the barbarian came to help, we tried to break open the door, but the barbarian rolled low even with advantage. Meanwhile, the rust monsters are trying to melt every piece of equipment of the cleric, using both their antennae to attack and bite against his equipment during the same turn, which they should not be able to do. You push and push, but with no avail, the door is too solid. Damn, uh, I keep my action again to help the barbarian. Make an insight check. The wizard rolled something like 15. You realize that you have only tried to push the door, not to pull it. Alright, the wizard tries to open the door, and the door opens freely. What the hell? I have 16 intelligence with this wizard. I told you I tried to open the door. I even asked you if I could use my action to do it. You told me the door didn't open, and I even still had to use my action. It's not like my PC is that dumb to not try to open it both ways. You were in a panic. You didn't realize to try to pull the door until now. The wizard actually was the less panicked person in the room, since he had literally no metal equipment on himself. After that, there was a bit of an argument, but we decided to just let it go and just proceed to the next room, and to the rest of the dungeon. The whole adventure for us was a succession of salty and nonsensical moments that now we look back with exasperated hilarity. I could squeeze out at least another three small horror story moments from it. The DM was not even new to the game. We were all already experienced, both as players and DMs, and we chose to do this low-level adventure just to change the pace from a higher-level campaign we were in. This is one of those DM gotcha moments that I see a lot on popular D&D memes that I... HATE A LOT! <clears throat> uh, look, 
I get it. Sometimes this can be funny, it can be memorable, a great moment for your players, but here, it's very clearly frustrating. Look, you guys have seen me run my games. You guys know I'm not the kind of DM who takes it easy on my players by any means. However, the reason my players get their butts kicked is because they're in tough fights, not because they forget some basic life thing like pulling a door open instead of pushing it. That would be just frustrating. The reason my fights are difficult is because the monsters are difficult, not because I as the DM are just putting arbitrary nonsense into the game to screw over the players. I know this may as well be the motto of my DMing life, but towing the line between frustrating and challenging is difficult. But doing stuff like this, well, it's just jumping over the line entirely for for no damn reason. Don't do this guys. It's lame. It's frustrating. It's needless. I have been DMing a game of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition for a group of my college friends. It's my first time running a multi-session game. I haven't tried for about 4 years because my storytelling wasn't up to snuff, but since then I have improved dramatically. I'm a pretty paranoid person for some personal reasons, so I'm watchful of people cheating on purpose or by accident, but this is taking the cake. I'm running for a big group of five, which are new and don't understand the system along with one veteran. I adjust some stuff and made a fair game for people who aren't that good at the game yet. Then one of them pulls out their character sheet. Now this guy had run another character in a game a few weeks before and was pretty beefy. A 20 stat at level 1, 18 plus 2 for racial bonus. I took note of that and moved on. I started my game and he sat down with his new character who was also pretty beefy. I noticed his stats were high. Unusually high. Not good. Then it hit me. He's a power gamer, but not just any power gamer. He's a power gamer with no power. By this point, the group is level 2 blah 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 story stuff and the party split into two places one of which is the docks he our problem player has gone with the veterans rogue character to investigate now who should sneak down to the lower sections the rogue or the monk well the monk of course and he gets caught obviously fails a dc 15 check to sneak onto the boat itself and instead of running which i gave him an obvious hint to do he turns and faces the guards. These 12 guards don't want to be caught under any circumstances. They all fall upon him and in a single turn, his level 2 monk was obliterated. That's not the end folks because now I've seen his new character and now I've caught him cheating. I mean, it's like not even close. Not one, not one stat is under 14. The average is stats 16.3 to 7.1 at best. He has two plus four stats. I don't get to know the number because he didn't write them down. I tried confronting him casually, but he seriously thinks I don't know he was cheating. How do I know he's cheating, you ask? Well, you see, it's his own fault. He's obsessed with using D&D Beyond, probably so he can change his roles as needed. A fun quirk is it tells you how much to boost the initiative. On his physical copy, it's plus one, but his dex mod is plus four. What does this tell you? He had a 12, actually, and then just casually cranked it up, but forgot to correct the initiative. And even if that isn't the case, I know he's cheating because it's a statistical anomaly to get these high stats twice in a row. Two out of the three characters he's gotten have gotten 18s on their rolls, which is like a 1% chance of happening just once. Here's what I'm going to do. After this goes up, I'm posting in the Discord a little more of a direct message asking for everyone to upload their sheet. From there, I'm going to take an average of everyone's stats. It should be around 12. Deviations of more than two either way should be a discussion and post them together. I will say that that guy's average is a lot higher than everyone else's. If that doesn't work, I'm going to DM him saying that his character sheets have been too high across all characters and that I'd like him to re-roll for the next session. If he refuses, gone. Play fair, folks. As the DM, there's nothing I can throw at the party that will be fair and fun. It will be too easy or too hard. Level 2 parties are meant to be rough going and pick up as they go on, not fighting with ease from the start. While I don't think I necessarily agree with that final sentiment, level 2 parties can be easy or hard depending on the game that you're playing, but I do agree with everything else here. 
I run a game where difficult combat is a big part of the appeal. So if someone cheats, it just ruins everything. Like, what's the point of me spending hours and hours prepping these combats with in-depth mechanics when you're just gonna breeze right past it with broken rolls or completely cheating on your character sheet? Can godly stats like this happen? Yes, they can. I just watched it happen with my friend who just started playing D&D himself and now has insane stats on his first character. However, that is like the OP said, a statistical anomaly. Also, as we see here, great stats just can't save you. Whether you're cheating or not, acting like an idiot is probably gonna get your character killed, especially if you're doing a 1 on 12 fight. I mean, really, at the end here, the OP is being pretty nice with the way they're handling this. I would've just called it out straight up and kicked them from the group. Cheating like this? It's not okay, guys. I have a friend group that will always party together and play Dungeons and Dragons, but recently someone joined the group. God, I don't hate this guy, but his actions truly piss me off. Okay, right, maybe I do hate this guy. Look, he just won't let me talk or ask questions to the DM or other people. But the worst part about him is that if people comment about how they like something about me or my character, this guy will always talk about how it's not actually awesome or cool. It's a game. But if I ask questions about the scenario or gameplay, this dude, yes, this dude will stop just to call me dumb or some other similar word. We literally just meet to play and talk about D&D. We don't know anything about each other's lives, but this guy just can't accept that one of the players having fun with the group is me, and I have no idea why this dude dislikes me so much. If our DM asks questions about my character or just mentions her, Mr. Hater will start asking about the other characters or talk about them as if to make the DM move on. If I start talking, this dude will talk over me and find ways to cut me off. That's right, I can't even open my mouth to talk to my friends sometimes. I know what you're thinking, Crispy, it can't end there. And you're right, it doesn't. Cause eyes up, we've got part two. After my previous post, I took some time to think if there was something wrong with my DM or if this was even the right party for me. I talked to the other players, the changeling and the cleric. To keep things simple, the changeling is one of the players in my previous post and the cleric is the other male player from before the asshole joined our game. As I mentioned before, changeling has a great sense of humor and we all love her. She managed to make the game fun even for me when Mr. Asshole was being a dick. My bard and her rogue would be doing fun stuff like singing and working on cons to trick bad guys, something like the two characters from El Dorado. I asked her what her opinion on Mr. Asshole was and she dislikes him. Even if he can't be a dick to her in front of the others, this dude sometimes makes snarky comments about her. If it was up to Changeling, Mr. Asshole would be out of the game. I asked if she would vote for me if the DM made the party choose and her answer was yes. She is a real one, really a good friend. Now, enter Cleric. He really doesn't care at all. I really didn't know how to approach him since this guy has that eternal poker face and hates drama. The world could end or aliens could invade and he would not pick a side. I can respect him for that since we both joined the campaign just to have fun. Cleric made it clear that he wouldn't vote against me, but since the DM and Miss- Wait, seriously? Yeah, hi. Yeah, is this the CEO of YouTube? Okay, uh, oh, oh, cool. You're, you're the new guy. Great, awesome. I just had some questions to ask. Uh, you know, how many curses do I get now? <laughs> Only! Seriously? <laughs> <sighs> Wait, I, I mean, uh, no, I, I didn't say anything. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, bye. <sighs> get back to the video. Anyway, Cleric made it clear he wouldn't vote against me, but since the DM and Mr. Asshole seemed to be really close, he didn't want to get involved. Yep, it's exactly what you're thinking, but please wait for the big reveal. After talking to Cleric, it was time to confront the DM, but I tried to take it slow, be nice since she is more of the introvert than me. First, I asked her if Miss Asshole has made any compliments about me, then suddenly she gets really defensive about it and talks for like 20 minutes about how we both need to cut it out because it's making her really stressed. I asked her what she meant by that, and DM told me about how Mr. Ash was nice to her unless she mentioned me. If she talked about me, then Mr. Ash would tell her about how I made everything about me and my life, both in-game and out of game. That obviously made me uncomfortable, and I asked her if that's how she felt too. DM denied it, and told me that maybe Mr. Ash was just jealous. As some people have theorized from my previous post, Mr. Ash was probably insecure. But it wasn't because of my character, it was because of me. Mr. Ash and DM were dating, they just didn't tell us. It was really recent. Even before they started dating, Mr. Ash had warned DM that I could be interested in her, and to watch out for me. At least for him, when I did something in the campaign, it was to get her attention. 
Yeah, I messed up, right? Look at that guy. He is obviously rolling that dice to seduce the DM and not to perform for the bar patrons. I let DM vent and calm down before we could continue talking. She had gone through some bad relationship stuff before, both in romance and bad friendships. We both have gone through that stuff and it really messed us up, but her past was a lot worse than mine, just giving some context. She's not a jerk, just really bad with people sometimes. After DM calmed down, I made it clear that I wasn't interested in her. She was worried about messing things up and losing both her friend and her boyfriend. That's why she didn't get involved when Miss Rachel was being kind of rude to me sometimes. I made it clear that Mr. had to cut it out, or it would be him or me in the campaign. But even if I left the campaign, we could be friends as long as Mr. you know, left me alone. That worked. And she agreed to talk to her boyfriend, aka Mr. Told. Well, obviously, it didn't work, or I wouldn't be posting this update at all. Well, our peace lasted two weeks before Mr. screwed it up again. After the party managed to climb a witch's magical tower, the boss kicked our butts. Rogue wanted to negotiate, but Paladin and Cleric went all deus vault on the witch, and it ended badly. The tower was like Baradur, and the witch was like Saruman, and we had been hired to steal... Yeah, ma magical <clears throat> rings. Cleric managed to save my butt one last time, but he went down too. We were all about to die, but the DM asked for a break. It wasn't her first time killing a party, but she isn't a big fan of doing it. And Rogue was getting emotional. Miss was trying to cheer up Rogue while myself and Cleric were both talking about making new characters. But then I had the bardiest of ideas after Rogue told me to seduce the witch as a joke. I rolled with it after DM came back. I asked DM if I could make one last action, and it was to try to seduce the witch. DM laughed her butt off because of how dumb it was, but she allowed since the witch could kill me with one hit. Natural 20. It was beautiful. Obviously, you can't actually seduce the big bad, but it was enough to convince her to recruit us. One of the magical rings even showed up and decided to choose my character after the big bad allowed it. We're all having fun. Right? No. Mr. Ho would later tell me to shut up out of nowhere and ruin all of my fun. This time it wasn't for a mistake or something, it was just really uncalled. His paladin was talking to the big bad when I asked a question about the rings. It was enough for him to stop, look at me, and say, SHUT UP! And then continue talking like nothing happened. I then looked at the DM to see if she would do something, but she just stood there. Red as a tomato. That's when it hit me. DM wasn't going to change, and it was the same with the guy. Even if I had fun sometimes, it just wasn't fun at all. After taking a deep breath, I just stood up, called the guy a fuck. Are you kidding? Fine, fine. I called the guy a meanie. That better? Alright. I called the guy a meanie and left. At the end of the day, it was my choice to stay with the coward DM and Mr. I then left the Discord and warned DM that I wouldn't join any games or go anywhere with that guy. I'm not gonna lie. That made me feel amazing. It was the best feeling in the world, but it gets even better. Rogue messaged me later and told me how she called DM and Miss Bull on their BS after I left, and she decided to leave the campaign too. Cleric did decide to stay, but he agreed with Rogue and talked to DM and said it had to stop. Mr. was being a dick, and it was obviously because he was dating the DM. Mr. messaged me later and apologized forcibly by the DM, probably. My humble answer was for him to go away and never message me again before blocking him. It was the best feeling in the world. Rogue decided to block DM too because she is still angry at her for not kicking her crap boyfriend from the group. We're currently looking for a new group and decide to make characters inspired by Eldorado in another game. She's really a good friend. I don't talk to Cleric too much, but we're cool. He even invited me to a different group on Discord, but I needed a break from Dungeons & Dragons. And now for DM, I didn't block her and we're still talking, but things just feel weird. We probably won't play together again and just drift away. I feel like she probably hates me for standing up for myself, but it had to be done. I do feel bad for DM because her relationship looks toxic as hell. I want to be here as a friend if she regrets it later. She was my friend before this happened. I wanted to be friends again, but we both need a break. Look guys, it's hard to hear, but it has to be said. If you want to help people, that's great. But at the end of the day, helping them can't hurt you. You shouldn't surrender your own well-being in order to help others. It is their job to take care of themselves. It's okay for you to help, but if your help ends up hurting you, it's something that has to stop. You need to take care of yourself first and foremost, because frankly, you can't rely on anyone else to take care of you, but you. 
Though really, Rogue in this story, the changeling rogue friend, is really making me doubt that statement because that is a great friend right there. Somebody who helps you out, backs you up, that's good. We all want that person in our lives. And frankly, it's okay to want that kind of person in your life, but it's much better to be that person in someone else's life. Remember that backing someone up like that is something that feels so good to them, especially somebody who feels like they're all alone. Obviously, if it hurts you to do that, don't. Take care of yourself. But if you can, if you're able, backing someone up like that is one of the best things you can do in your friendship. Um, we didn't really talk about Dungeons and Dragons much, but... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was recently playing Out of the Abyss, spoilers for the module by the way. Our loving crew here will be the Druid, which is myself, Wizard, Puss, and Lizard. The first session went alright as things went. All the players met each other while being locked up by the drow for one reason or another. With the players going over introductions, Puss wasted no time in taking charge. The first words out of her mouth was trying to convince everyone of her plan looking for a way out, and trying to get the orc to feign illness. It was odd for the first act upon meeting complete strangers, but I wrote it off as a personality quirk, and we went forward, managing to convince the drow captain to let us out before being freed by a convenient demonic attack. Neat. We managed to escape during the chaos along with the entire group of NPCs, and I mean all the NPCs, while the demons and drow fought each other. Moving in our massive group, we made our way down into the tunnels. Everything was all good for now. Session 1 was over. This is where session 2 and the horror story truly begins. Since we had such a large party, we were moving along and didn't really have time to stop and breathe outside of our plan to go into Shushar's hometown. The Shushar guy, he led the way, despite having no recollection of how to get back and repeatedly managing to somehow get his survival check straight despite having no point in survival, proficiency or stat-wise. The prelude to the true horror began when the wizard was awoken to a strange noise in the night. Going along his way, he would find the body of Shushar, cleaned and eviscerated. He woke up everyone as we wondered who the killer was. This would turn out to be a mistake by the game master as whatever pace we had came to a screeching halt. Puss took no time in trying to suspect who the culprit was, going over every detail from everyone while myself and Blizzard tried to investigate the nearby area. Turning into a dog, I was able to sniff out the scent from Shushar's body as a special type of cleaning agent, while Lizard got confirmation from a smaller, uh, Lizard using his speak with animals as to the size of the assailant. From there though, we were sort of, uh, stuck. We knew it was one of the four suspects but had no means of actual proof. The cleaning smell came from a moss that four people held onto, but all of those people were proficient with knives and held the moss for good luck. It literally could have been all of them or one of them or some combination. Puss, however, was in the mood for passing judgment as she instantly accused the twin Duragar, which wasn't a really good look for her as she was instantly claiming that they were evil and up to no good because I guess they were Duragar, yeah. We were trying to figure out what was the motive, seeing if there was anything off about the suspects and trying to find any potential leads that fit the bill. The time would devolve into a two hour long quest of trying to figure out who killed the fish monk and which of the four NPCs the real killer was. Me and Lizard came up with a scheme of trying to bait out the murderer by pretending we knew who he was and were going to allow him to fess up as atonement, as per Shushar's wishes, or else we would execute him the next night. We reasoned that he tried to kill me or the lizard. We'd surprise attack him and defeat the killer. Wizard, with a W, was being a goofball and claimed that any small person, including himself as he was a gnome, could have been responsible for the murder, trying to get some levity from the situation and help out the Duragar twins. Puss, though, she was not having any fun as she wouldn't lay off the DM. She was accusing the twins hard before the wizard stepped in, asking repeatedly about everyone's shift schedules, which we hadn't even set up as there were so many, trying to forcibly arrest folks too. I think the DM was just trying to give us a mercy after her fourth time asking about everyone's schedules. The murderer finally slipped up and she seized the chance to restrain him, which was pretty easy all things considered. Turned out he was just some uh, crazy cult guy and everyone agreed to kill him. The lizard, who was stressed out about the whole investigation out of character, wanted to turn the guy's body into an item with his lizard folk feature. But Puss was not having any of that, and she yeeted the body off into the stream. There was a slight deflation in the air after that, as we sort of just, uh, mauled around. I would later message him and say that Puss was being kind of pushy, asking to see if he could address that with her. After that, the Discord and the game were gone. Whatever the reason for the disappearance, I am glad that the final moments of my druid 
where spends sharing the cooked fish monk's body with her lizard buddy, turning the brutal death into a means of sustenance in the circle of life. One last morbidly wholesome moment in the end. This is a much more typical horror story with a player who is doing something that often is seen as a good thing. Somebody who's being the party face, the party leader. You know, think Imogen right now in Critical Role Campaign 3. Somebody who is largely directing the plot and being the face of the party is a, well, it's a common trope for a reason. However, there's a big difference between being party face and just taking away other people's agency. I go back and forth on this a lot. I don't really know if it's worse when a DM takes away your agency or when a player takes away your agency but I think they're just both bad and you shouldn't do it in general. Puss wanted to take the lead in this murder and investigation that the DM apparently accidentally started, which that's a whole other problem. Guys, make sure to take notes so you know what's going on in your session so you don't screw yourself in the future. It's really important. But anyway, the real problem is Puss taking control and not allowing the other players to have any sort of agency during the investigation. She had her suspects and she wanted them to be guilty. That is a terrible way to go about this. When you already come to a conclusion, you want that conclusion to be realized without thinking about what the other players might be getting out of this whole situation. In the end, it's up to you to work together with the rest of the party. Even if you're party face, it's important for everyone to have a role. Here, Puss took control and that control resulted, I assume, and the disappearance of this game. And that's going to be it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys want to see your own stories on this very channel, you can head down into the description where there is an email. Simply send your story to that inbox and you'll have a chance to be in one of these videos. But in any case, if you guys enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, then you can check out our Shadow Over Kerkonos D&D podcast. We are starting a new D&D podcast very soon. So if you want to see what that's like, you can head into the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Christmas Tavern to get more of our content as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories thoughts go down in the comments down below if you can't think of a comment leave the comments that felt good to let me know you made it to the end of the video and that's just like comment subscribe i'll see you all next time farewell mm -hmm.